What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to learn how to update our user list in the database with Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to learn how to update our user list. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee, it's just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, in the last video, we switched over from the SQLite database to the MySQL database. Uh, in this video, I thought I might update to the Postgres, but I figured, yeah, you could probably figure that out based on the last video. You just have to update your database URL, basically. If people want me to go over that, let me know in the comment section below, and I'll make a video on it. We'll probably talk about Postgres later on when we push this online anyway. So I figured I'd just wait till then. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of boring database videos. And instead, uh, we want to move forward and start to update our user list. So in the last couple of videos, we had this user list, very basic. And in this video, I want to make these clickable so that we can come over here, you know, uh, update a user, click OK. Hey, it says, hey, it was updated successfully. We go back here and now it says John Elder 2. All right, so that's what we're going to look at in this video. All right, so head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code for this video and all these videos in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Flask Friday videos. So check those out if you haven't so far. So, okay, what do we need to do here? So we go into our hello.py file, and first off, we're going to need a new web page that we can click on to update the records, right? The records in the database. So let's come down here, any old where here, and let's go uh, update database record, whatever. And let's create a new route. Let's go app.route. And we want to point this to update. And then we also need to pass in an ID. So which record do we want to update? We want to update int ID. This will pass a number into this URL that we can then grab and use to look up any specific record that we want to look up. So, okay, we're going to fill out a form and stuff. So we need to do this methods equals, and then inside of here, get or post. And we've done that sort of thing in the past. So there's our route. Now let's define this page. So let's go update. Now we want to pass in this ID. Now this ID will basically be whatever was in the URL that gets passed in. So if it's update three, this ID will become three, then we can look up the ID in our user model of three or whatever. So define update ID. And we're going to need a form on this page because we're going to be filling out the form to update the record. So let's go form equals. And let's use our user form that we used earlier. Now, user form is down here. So we probably need to move this whole thing. So let's just copy all of this stuff. Make sure it's sort of under our user form. Okay, so form equals user form. Now we need to determine what name in our database to update. So I'm gonna create a variable called name underscore two underscore update. And we wanna set that equal to users dot query dot let's go get or 404. And we wanna pass in ID because we want to query the user table, which is this table, right? And we want to get, or if it doesn't exist, give a 404 error. And we want to pass in that ID, which came from here, which ultimately came from the URL. So if we go to slash update slash three, three gets passed into here. And then we search by the user three, which is ultimately this, right? The, the ID of the record. So, okay name to update. So now we need to sort of determine if somebody went to the page or if they actually fill out the form and click the button. So we can I'm going to use a slightly different method for this. And we've done earlier, let's go if and let's go request dot method equals post when you fill out a form, you're posting the form, right? So we want to just call this request. So we need to make sure and come up here and import request. So I'll just import request up there. So, uh, okay. So if our request equals post, what do we want to do? Well, let's set name underscore two underscore update dot name to the request dot form and dot name. Now, this is a slightly different method that we used earlier in our form when we use this form thing here. 
You can use either one. I'm just showing you a different way to do it. Uh, this is uh, sort of a quicker, hackier way, but uh, but useful nonetheless. So we could just copy this whole thing and paste it again. And this one will be email. Because if you remember, our form has two fields, basically, name and email, right? So okay, so once we've got these things, so basically, a person fills out the form, they update the name or the email, and then that gets passed into these variables. Now we can take this and update our form with it. So to do that, we just let's do a try accept block. So what we want to do is db dot session dot commit. And that should work. Now that will take these things and commit them to the database and save them. So okay, once we've done that, let's do a little flash message. We learned about these earlier, we can go user updated successfully. Right? Now we need to return a web page. So let's go return. And then let's go render underscore template. And what do we want to render? Let's render the page update.html, which we haven't created yet. We'll do that in just a second. We also probably want to pass in this and this. So we could do that form equals form, comma, and then name to update equals name to update. Okay, so if everything works, if it's saved successfully, we'll get a message and we'll render and we'll return back to the same page and put all this stuff up on the screen. If something goes wrong, we need an accept loop here. And let's just grab all of this and paste it in. But instead of user updated successfully, let's say uh, error. Looks like there was a problem dot 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 try again whatever. And we still want to return it back to that same page, right? Okay, so we've got an if statement up here, we need an else to sort of round it out. So if they post to the page, then we want to do all of this. Now, if they were just going to the page before they've actually made their changes and filled out the form and, and posted it again, then we need to just throw up that page, right? So basically, we could just copy this whole thing. There we go. And that should do it. Okay, so we went through that pretty quick, but I think that will work. Now we need this update.html page, we need to actually create that page. So let's save this file, head over to our templates, right click and create a new file. And let's go file save as we want to save this as update.html. And we can come over here to let's see our add user page. And let's just copy this whole thing come over here and paste it into our update page. Now, let's see what do we got here? We've got user added, let's say, update user, this will give us a little flash message, if we have one, update user. We've got some stuff here. Here it says user list, let's say update user dot dot dot. And we've got some stuff. This is the form already. Okay, so let's maybe we don't need all of this stuff. Let's take this out, right? And we got this end if well, let's see what else we have here. All right, let's just come through here and look at all of our so we've got an if statement, we've got a for loop, we ended our for loop, we've got an else statement. We ended our if okay, so that's looking okay. Let's go ahead and save this. We're still going to need to do some work on this, but we'll do that in a second. But this is probably okay. So now let's head back over here and hit reload. And uh oh, we've got a error. Let's see line 47. What did I do? It's last Friday. Uh, Hello.py line 47. Oh, <laughs> this should not be there we go. Uh, okay, let's save this head back over here, hit reload. Okay, so we've got our user list. And we've got these things, these records, but they're not clickable yet. So we want to make the name clickable. And we need to point it to its own record. So how do we do that? Well, let's head over here. And let's go to our add user page. And this is the page that has all those things. And you could see right here, let's see for user in our users, 
here is the name. So in front of here, let's just put a link, href equals, and for now I'm just gonna put a hashtag, and we can come back here and close that tag. So now if we save this, come back over here and just make sure we're in the right spot, hit reload, we are not. Oh, this is the user added section. We need to do the same thing to, uh, let's see, down here, there we go, yeah. User ID, so let's do that right there. All right, so let's save this, head back over here, hit reload. Okay, so now we see links, right? We click on them, they don't actually go anywhere yet. So we need these to go somewhere. How do we do that? So let's create a URL for tag. So let's go URL underscore four. Now we wanna point this to update, right? Because that's what we called this here. But we also need to pass the user ID, which is this thing right there, here, right there, our user ID. And we can do that by just going like this, ID equals our user ID. That should do the trick. So let's save this, head back over here, hit reload. Now, look in the bottom left-hand corner, you see it says localhost slash update one, slash update two, update three. And if we click on one of these, it goes to our update user page. Now, we can update the user like this, but this is kind of weird, because like, what was our user again? I don't remember. Was this John Elder? Yeah, but we're clicking on this, and the form is there but that's no good. We want to sort of fill out this form automatically with the old information, right? So the username and the email. So how do we do that? Well, super easy, head back over here. And actually, before we do that, let's grab this link and let's come up here and let's do it here too. Okay, so this is after the form has been filled out to add a new user, it's, it puts the things on the screen. So we'll put that there as well. But now we wanna go back to update.html and this is where our form is. And you can see, let's see, if we come down here, here's the actual form and we need to make a few changes to this form. First off, you'll notice there's no action on this form. So we need an action and we need to point this to somewhere and we need to point it to, we can use a URL for tag or we could just go update slash and then we need to put the ID that we wanna update. So. This is gonna be name underscore to underscore update dot ID. All right, so if we save this, head back over here and just make sure that worked. We click on one of these. Uh, if we view the page source here, look down for the form, we see it has an action of update slash one. So, okay, that's cool. Now we wanna fill out these forms with whatever the actual record is. How do we do that? Well, let's just come down here. And we have the form name, we have the form email, these are labels. So we don't want the label, we want the actual thing. And you'll notice it has a class. We can also give this a, a value and set that equal to something. Well, what do we want to set it equal to? Name underscore two underscore update dot name. So let me just copy this whole thing. And we wanna do the same thing for email. So come down here and not the label, but the actual thing inside of here, where we have our form control class, we'll put dot email. So that name to update is getting passed when we call this page uh, right here, right? Or right here, or actually right here. So that name to update is this name to update is our query, users.query get or 404, passing that ID that grabs the actual record, passes it back to the page, and then on the page, we can put it on the form itself by giving this a value tag. So, all right, let's go ahead and save this, head back, that should do the trick. So now when we click on John Elder, boom, it says John Elder in there, and the email address is in there. So very cool. If I wanna update this to two, I can click submit. It goes back to our page, update slash one, and it says user updated successfully. It says update user. We can make another change if we want or we can just go back to our add user page and sure enough, there it says John Elder 2, and that seems to work. So if we come back here, we wanna update this back to regular old John Elder, we click submit, hey, user was updated successfully. We can navigate back to our page to check it out to make sure, sure enough, John Elder, the two is gone, and uh, that works. So a lot of moving parts to this thing, it seems a little bit convoluted, but it's really very simple. We're just creating a form, passing in the ID of the record, updating it, passing it back, and then 
to save it to the database, it's really just this one line. Uh, where are we at here? Update db session dot commit. So we're passing whatever was filled out into the form into these variables. Once they're there, we can just boom, commit them to the database. It gets updated. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off memberships. It pages $49 taxes, all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.